Ciao friends, Beth with Thimblehooks, and today I'm going to show you how I make my little wrap booty. These are so cute. They uh, The buttons actually have button holes. They wrap all the way around. They're just cute. Cute, cute, cute. So here's three examples. This one is kind of like little clown shoes. I thought those would be really cute for like Halloween or something. And this is just an everyday, and this one is a very specific color. It's cute. And the buttons make everything. See, this one is just an everyday kind of boot because it has just the brown buttons, but this one looks funny, and it's just comical and cute. So I've got those guys right there. You're going to need a scissors and a clicker to keep track of rows. You need a bunch of stitch markers. You know how I love my stitch markers, but we're really going to need, you're going to need like five, at least five. Two of the baby soles on my previous video. So two soles and two decorative buttons and then one little button that you won't see so it doesn't even matter what it looks like. It can be from anywhere. So this little button I'm going to put him away and I'm going to set these buttons aside for now because I don't need them quite yet. Those are the last finishing touches and today I am using, this is Karen Simply Soft Off-White, this is Karen Simply Soft um, Light Heather Gray and my, here it is, Karen Simply Soft, this should be Victorian Rose, yes it is, I just love this color, it's just a great pink, and I love pink, so let's get started, remember we need two of these from my previous videos, my previous video of showing how to make these, because I don't want to make these every time on all my booties, so we're going to just have two, whatever color you want, and then I'm going to put, then you sand, sandwich the wrong sides together with the tails on the inside. And I have this little piece of my Victorian rose. I'm going to use this for my slip stitching. All right, let's get started. All right, we're just going to slip stitch these together. Make sure everything is pulled nice and tight. It'll be 44 slip stitches. So I'll show you how that works. You go through the cream, I'm going through the off-white one and through the gray one all the way through and I'm going to pull through the pink and then go over to the next stitch go all the way through the cream or the off-white and go all the way through the gray and pull through again and slip stitch. I'm going to do that one more time through here and through the gray. See? And slip stitch. Now you can see that I do not have the pink. Oopsie, here we go. I don't have pink going over the booty. I have the gray here and the cream here and then the pink only shows on the top and on the bottom so you don't have the overlapping thing like this we don't want that we don't want that at all no 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 so I'm going to slip stitch 44 times all the way around and I will meet you back right here after I get all the way around keep these tucked in then you don't have to weave them in later but I'll meet you back here in just a couple of minutes and here's our last four stitches. There's 41. That's four slip stitches. 42. 43. And, ooh, I was cutting it awfully close with this piece. There we go. And 44. And normally right now I would cut this, but since it's already done, just pull this through. Turn it over, go through this stitch where you very where the original tail is, go all the way through, grab the other tail end and pull them through so they're both coming through the same part of the booty. They're gonna hang down here, we'll tuck those in later. But there, see? Pink shows here and here. 
but not over on the sides. We have there's the bottom is the gray and this stripe right here and now we're going to work with the pink. So the booty sole, those are slip stitched together. All right, so we have our 44 slip stitches and that's round one, so I'm going to go click, click. All right now we might have to mark off 30 at the, evenly at the toe. So on this is the toe because it's the big side and this is the heel because it's littler. But we need 30 of them marked off here. I usually just eyeball it first and then I count my stitches and see how close I am. If I'm off by one or two, that happens. But generally you can, you can kind of look. But I want them to be centered on the toe. So we're working on this part right here. This part right now. We're working on this part of the boot. Let's set him back over there. So let's just count these quick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Ha <laughs> ha! All right. I guess I've made plenty of these <laughs> that I can eyeball a 30 pretty good. Often I get like 28 or 29, but there's 30. So there you go. You're going to end up wanting, you're going to end up needing six, seven, probably seven stitch markers, I would say. That's what I use because I don't, I don't mind. I have lots of stitch markers and they don't really bother me. Some people don't like to use them, but I do. So here we go. Um, round two, now we're going to single crochet in these 30 that we just marked off. So let's make sure we start in the one with the stitch marker. Do a little slip stitch, get him in there, and now in that same stitch that has the pink stitch marker in it here, we want to do a single crochet. There we go. And now we're going to do 29 more because we want 30 single crochets from this stitch marker to this stitch marker. So I will show you one more time. We're going right underneath the pink very carefully not splitting the stitch or catching any of the cream so we don't want to do that number A little tricky sometimes but this part is really important and there's number three I'll meet you back at this pink stitch marker after we do 30 single crochets around the toe so I'll meet you back there in a minute stitch number 30 on row 2. Next time we're going to chain one so we're ready to go for the next one. And now on row 2, right here we're going to start in this stitch right here, the very first stitch. We want to mark the outside loop because we're going to need that little loop a little bit later and sometimes it gets it can be kind of hard to find so it's just easier to not have to dig for it it's already marked so what we are going to do is single crochet in the inside loop right there single crochet number one do that for the first five so there's single crochet crochet on the inside of the booty only single crochet in the inside loop number three single crochet on the inside number four and on this number fifth stitch right here we want to do the same thing that we did on the first one I take another marker I want to mark the outside stitch because we're going to need to find him too so he's marked and now we want to work in the inside booty loop of that one. 
So see now we have our stitch markers and there's five loops waiting their turn for in a little while, right there. All right, now in the next 20, round the toe again, 20 single crochets through both loops like normal. So there's number one. Two, three, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And we should have five stitches left. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Now we're going to do the same thing that we did on these front, or these first five. We have to mark the outside loop. So I'm going to do that with the green one right now. Mark the outside loop because we're going to need to work in that in a little bit. So right now we're just going to work on the inside loop. See, that was nice. On the inside loop with a single crochet, inside loop only. There's one. Inside the booty loop, two. Single crochet, inside loop only, number three. And number four. And then again, just like we did our very first stitch, make sure you can see it. There's our last stitch right here. Right here. Want to put a stitch marker in the outside loop of that stitch and single crochet in the inside. And there we go. And that is round clicker. Round three. Yay. All right, round four. We're still working on the toe. Still working right over here. Now we're on round four. Now this one is trickier. We're going to turn it, but we're not going to chain one. We're going to skip this very first stitch right here. I'm just going to skip it. And single crochet over here. And that will end up, so we just skipped that stitch, so that one won't count anymore, so it'll be 29 all the way back around. So since we skipped the first one, this is number one, number two, single crochets all the way around to the other side, and there'll be 29. And I will meet you back there in a minute. 27, 28, and our last one, 29. Since we skipped the first one and didn't chain or anything. That one's number 29. See, we're just building this up a little bit in the toe. And that was round four. Round five is exactly the same thing that we just did. We're going to turn our work without chaining and skip this first stitch. Jump over to here. Boom. And single crochet. All the way around to the other other end, there will be 28. So 28 single crochets. One in each stitch. And our last stitch is number 28. Let's see. Stitch number 28. And that was round five. So you can see we're starting to work up right in here. That's what we've got going on right here. Okay, round six. We're going to turn and don't chain one, but we will work in the same stitch the very first stitch, but there's no chain one. So we still want to work in this stitch right here with no chain one, right here. Do a single crochet. And do three more. 
single crochet number two, single crochet number three, and single crochet number four. Now we're going to reduce the toe. So we're going to double crochet two together ten times. So that's a round, let's yarn over, go through the stitch, pull up a loop, go through two, yarn over, go through the next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Now you have your three loops on your hook, pull through all three. That one's number one. Do that one more time. This is number two. Through the two, through the two, and through all three. One more time. That was number two. Through the stitch, yarn over through the stitch, pull up, go through two, yarn over, go through the next stitch, yarn over, pull through two, and now pull through all, all three. And that's number three. We want to do that ten times. So I'll meet you right over here. our last one. Double crochet two together and pull through all three. We have four stitches left and each one of those gets a single crochet. So we'll go to the end now. There's one, two, three, and four. Now we just started to reduce this to make it look like a toe. Starting to look like a toe now because we just pulled a little bit of this in. So we reduced our stitches. We get to do that in one more time. And that was round six. Click, round six. All right, round seven. <clears throat> we're going to do the same thing. We're going to turn, but we're not going to chain. And single crochet four in that very start with the starting with the very first stitch. There's one, two, three, four, and then we're going to reduce again. But since we already made this smaller, we only have to do five double crochet two together. So here's the first one again. One. Through the stitch, pull through two, through the next stitch, pull through two, and then pull through all three. And that's number two. We need to do five of those total. This one's number three. There's number four. And here's number five. Four stitches left. Each one of those gets a single crochet. One, two, three, and the last one is always sneaky because we didn't chain one, so it gets to be a little tight sometimes. But we'll get it. And number four. And that was round seven. See, it's starting to look like a little shoe. This is great. One more reducing round. All right, so we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to turn our work, but we're not going to chain. Go in this very first stitch, single crochet. Whoopsie. Same thing again, we're going to turn our work, no chaining, just going to go right into that very first stitch with a single crochet, and in the next one. So there's two single crochets, start this one, and we're going to double crochet two together twice. So there's the first one, one, through two, and then through all three, and here's the second one. Now 
now one normal double crochet right here and then we want to reduce two more times so two double crochet two together and there's number two and this is symmetrical so the last two stitches match the first two stitches they are just single crochets in these last two stitches and again this one's a little tricky because we didn't chain So you don't forget about it. And there we go. Now oh, it looks like a slipper. It's so cute. That was round eight. Click. And we have one more on the front of the boot. One more round. We're going to do the same thing again. We're going to turn, but no chaining, and go into this very first stitch with a single crochet, and also in the next three. So the first four stitches are single crochets. There's number two, number three, and number four. We're going to chain three, so we're making a buttonhole. Chain three. And then we're going to skip this one next stitch. Just one stitch. Just skip one. Even though we chain three, we're going to just skip one. Skip over that one. Single crochet. Number one. Number two. Single crochet number three. And single crochet number four. And that left stitch gets kind of tight sometimes. There's number four all the way to the end. There we go. And now we can fasten off because this front toe part, the front of the boot is done. So just do a chain. We'll get our scissors. Snip. Pull them through. And tighten that down a smidge. See, so there we go. Looks like a little slipper, but right here we have a buttonhole because we did a chain three and skipped one, so there's just a little opening right here. So that's perfect. Now we get to start on the wrap part. Now we're going to do the top of the boot or the wrap part. That is next. That was round nine, so I hit my clicker, and now we're going to move on to round ten. Alrighty, now we're going to work on the boot wrap, which is the top. I'm just going to tuck those in for now. We don't. We can worry about weaving in all the ends at the very end of the project. All right, there we go. Now we have the toe of the boot. This part, this is perfect. Now we're going to start working on. Now we can work on the wrap part that goes all the way around. So on one booty, you start here at this green stitch and work this way. And for the other booty, you would start in this one and work the other direction so that you have one flap that goes this way and one that goes that way. So you have a pair. So we will just start right here. This time for row 10. So we just fasten on into that marked outside loop from row 3. And we're going to chain 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, looks like you get it, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. 
and we're going to turn our chain over. We're going to work back down this chain in these back bumps. You see the V, but if you turn it over, there's these little back bumps. So that'll end up, since we just chained 14, we're going to end up doing 13 single crochets back down this chain. So in the first back bump that you can work in, single crochet. One, two, three, and thirteen, right there. There we go. So this is the very beginning of working around the boot. Very beginning. So there we go. So we worked down, we had a chain 14 and single crocheted 13 back down the back side in the bumps. And now we're going to slip stitch into the next three outside loops that are left over from round three. That's why we marked the outside row or uh, stitch number one and stitch number five so we could make sure we find them. So now we're just going to do a slip stitch right there. There's number one, slip stitch number two, and slip stitch number three. And we're going to turn our work. We're going to skip over these three. Those three, the three slip stitches that we just did are not going to be worked. They're going to be skipped. So one, two, three. Means we want to work in this stitch right here. So one, two, three. We're going to work in here, right in this stitch with Suzette stitch. Yay, my favorite stitch, which is a single crochet and a double crochet in the same stitch. Then you skip one and a single crochet and a double crochet in the next stitch. Skip one stitch single crochet, double crochet in the same stitch, skip one, single and double in the same stitch, skip one, single and double, skip one, single and double, skip one, and in our very last stitch, right here, single crochet only for a Suzette stitch. So there we go. Starting to work on that wrap. I'm going to work all the way around. And that was row 10. So row 11 is just a row of Suzettes right here row of Suzette down the next side. So we're going to chain one and turn our work. In the very first stitch it's a single and a double and a skip. Single, double, and a skip. stitch right here is going to be a single crochet only. So that was row 11. Now row 12, we're going to slip stitch. See? Make sure that's a little tightened up. Okay, row 11, I'm sorry, row 12. This is row 12 we're starting. There's our last little outside loop. I'm glad he's marked because we could have been very easily missed him. So we're going to slip stitch into that guy. There's a slip stitch and into the next two from round one. One and two. Right here. So there's slip stitch number two and 
slip stitch number three, just like we had done before. We're going to turn and skip those three slip stitches that we just did. Those are not workable stitches. They're just, they're just our slip stitches. So one, two, three, and we want to work in this stitch right here. One, two, three, skip those three stitches. So we want to go one, two, three. Oopsie, let's make that a little bit tighter. There we go. So we want to skip these three. <clears throat> one, two, three, and work in that stitch right there. So skip one, two, three, and we're going to work in this stitch with a Suzette, which is a single and a double, and a skip. Single and a double and skip. Single, double, and skip. Single and double and skip. All the way to the end. Skip single and a double. And in the very last stitch is only a single crochet because that's the way that a Suzette stitch works. You don't double crochet in that one. So see we're working our way around. This is really getting, it works out pretty quickly once you get to this point. You can see, definitely see your progress very quickly. That was row 12. Click. Now row 13. We're going to work back down with the Suzette stitch. Chain 1 and Suzette all the way back down again. So that's a single in the first and a double with a skip. Next. And then a single double, skip, single double, skip, single double, all the way back down. And remember that the very last stitch is a single crochet only. Single and a double and a skip and the very last stitch is right there is a single crochet only. See, we're starting to work our way around. It's getting super cute. And that was row 13. Click. Alright, so we'll move on. That was the end of row 13. On row 14, you probably can see the pattern coming here. We're going to slip stitch into the next three. One, two, and three. From our slip stitches on round one that put our booty soles together, we're going to slip stitch in the next three. One slip stitch. two, and, whoopsie, and number three. We're going to turn our work, skip these three stitches, those three slip stitches that we just did. Again, we won't be working them, we're just skipping back over them. So one, two, three. So we want to work in this stitch right here, right here single crochet and a double crochet in the same stitch and a skip. So the very last stitch was a single crochet only and that was round 14. So now round 15, so Suzette all the way down. Chain one and turn your work so you're ready to do the next one. And again Suzette, so single double in the same stitch and a skip. Then you go this, single double, and skip all the way down. The very last stitch will be a single crochet only. Single and a double, and a skip. And this last one is just this little tiny stitch. Sometimes that one gets kind of tight. But he's a single crochet only. And that was row 15. See, this works up really fast. We only have 13 stitches per row. 
going pretty quick. Now we're already to wrap row 16. So we're going to slip stitch again into the next three. One, two, three. Slip stitch into these next three stitches that were left over and unworked from row one. There's one slip stitch, there's two, and there's three. Making sure you don't split any of the stitches. Go right underneath the pink, in between the pink and the off white. Again, we're going to skip these stitches, or these slip stitches, one, two, three, and we're going to work into this stitch right here. One, two, three, skip three, work into that fourth one with a Suzette and work back up again. So the one, two, three, and we're working here. A single and a double in the same. And skip all the way back up to the top, remembering that the very last stitch is a single crochet only. See how quickly this one actually works up. The very last stitch is a single crochet only. See how quickly that works up? We are just cruising right along. And that was row 16, which is also the same as row 14. So that was row 16. Moving on to row 17 is just a, is a repeat of the going back down again with the Suzette. So it's a chain one and turn our work and Suzette all the way down, which is a single and a double, and a skip. Single, double, skip, single, double, all the way down to the end, remembering that the last one is a single crochet only. Single and a double, the same stitch, skip, and here's our last stitch right here, single crochet only. And that was row Seventeen. Now row eighteen. It's just like we've been doing. We're going to slip stitch on these slip stitches from row one that were unworked. We're going to slip stitch three of them again. So there's one, two, slip stitch, and three slip stitch. Skip over those three stips, slip stitches that we just made. One, two, three. We don't want to use those. They're not workable. One, two, three. So we want to work right here. So we're going to skip one, two, three, and we're going to work right in here with a, our Suzette back up. It's a single and a double. And skip all the way to the top. single and a double, same stitch, skip and in this, skip this one and the very last stitch is a single crochet only. Alright, and that was number row 18, so click. And our row 19 is just going back down again with the Suzette, so we chain one and turn our work all the way back down with the Suzette stitch, single and double in the same stitch and a skip a single and a double and skip the stitch and there's the last one single crochet only and that was row 19 getting close and row 20 is going to be like we have been doing slip stitch into the next three from row one that have been unworked right here. So we're going to do a slip stitch right here. These can be a little bit tricky because we've worked into so many of them and these weren't used yet. There we go. Just don't want to snag the off white so that's why I'm quite particular about that stitch. 
right there. There's a slip stitch number one. Slip stitch number two without splitting any of my stitches. Very nice. Slip stitch. Oh. And slip stitch number three. There we go. Slip stitch number three. Just like we did before, those slip stitches are not workable. We're going to skip them over. Skip over them. One, two, three. One, two, three. And work right in here with a Suzette and work back up again. A single and a double. And then a skip. All the way back up to the top. Single and a double skip and the last stitch is a single crochet only and that is row 20. Okay we're gonna work back down. There's a chain one. Oops I didn't say that part. There's a chain one and turn and Suzette all the way back down again. And the last stitch is a single crochet only. Right now, we've used up all, you can see, we've used all of the original unworked stitches from round one. So now we have to use the front loop onlys that we marked because it's very important. So we're going to go to this blue one right here. That's why we marked them so we don't lose track of those stitches. I love stitch markers. I know there's a lot of people that don't care for them but I think that they are absolute lifesaver and a big, big, big save, time saver. So there's single one or slip stitch one, slip stitch two, and slip stitch number three. Now we're going to turn our work and of course skipping over just like we have been the, all the other times. One, two, three, those slip stitches are not workable. We're going to skip those and we'll back. One, two, three to right here and work our Suzette stitch. which is a single and a double in the first and then a skip. Work all the way back up again. Single and a double and a skip. Single and a double and skip. Single double and the last stitch is a single crochet only. See I forgot to mark that was 21. So that was round 22. Now round 23, row 23 is just working back down here again. So it's chain one and a turn and Suzette back down to the bottom. It's pretty easy. Works up pretty fast, I think. I'm going a little bit slower when I'm in front of the camera here just so I can hopefully have everyone see all my stitches. Normally I work a little bit faster than this. Single and a double. And a single and a double. And the very last stitch, we're going to skip this one. Very last stitch in this row is a single crochet only. And that was 23. Now, row 24 is the last two outside loop onlys that are left over from round three, we're going to slip stitch just into those two. 
instead of three like we have been. It's just a slip stitch number one and slip, st slip stitch number two into that last marked stitch. We're going to turn our work and skip two. So again, those are not worked stitches. We're going to skip over those slip stitches. One, two, and work into that third stitch from the hook with a single and a double all the way back up to the top. And skip single, double, skip single, double, and skip single, double, and skip single, double, and skip single, double, skip, and our last stitch is a single crochet only. And that was row number 24. Now 25 and 26 are exactly the same. So we're chain one, we're in row 25, and we're going to Suzette down again, one, So there's a single and a double in the first stitch. Skip. Three, there's a single and a double. And a skip. There's the fourth one, single, a double. And a skip. Single and a double and skip, single, and double, and skip, and there's our last stitch is down here. Right there is a single crochet only. Right, so that was row 25. We've used up all of our slip stitches, so now we're just going to do like we were doing a normal old swatch. No more slip stitching into the booty sole. So a chain one and turn. Exactly the same. All the way back up again with this with the Suzette stitch, which is a single and a double and a skip. And in the last stitch is a single crochet only. And that was row 26. All right, now we're on to row 27. So we're chain one and turn our work. We're going to su su that stitch all the way down. So we're going to ignore these last two stitches. And we're going to slip stitch, or we're going to do our single crochet. Well, it's going to end right here. So there's actually only 11 stitches made here. So again, we're going to skip these last two. And we're going to end right here. So I will show you how we're doing that. We want to end. Let's mark it. That'll be a good way to do it. We're going to end up in this row. We're going to skip this one and skip this one. We're going to ignore them. We're not just going to skip them. We're going to ignore. For this row, we're going to ignore the last two stitches. And this will be our last stitch. So I'll just mark that one really fast. And now we're going to sew that back down again with our chain one and turned our work and there's a single and a double. And now like I said, we're going to ignore these last two stitches. So we're going to pretend that this is our very last one and it gets a single crochet only. So again, that was number 27, only got <coughs> Row 27 only got 11 stitches instead of 13 because we ignored these last two right here. Don't need those. So that was row 27. Right now, 28 through 32 are all exactly the same. We're going to chain one and turn and Suzette back down again. It's pretty predictable, I think. So it's a single and a double and one and a skip. 
single and a double in the same stitch and a skip single and a double in the same stitch and a skip single double skip single double and the last stitch is a single crochet only and that was row 28 now we're going to do 29 30 31 32 so 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So there's five rows total that are exactly the same. Just repeat this four more times. I will meet you at the end of row 32. And a double and a skip. And our last stitch. Oops. The last stitch in row 32 is a single crochet. Now it's starting to make the part that's going to go around the toe. So we're almost done. We really, really are. We're almost done. Alright, row 33. We're going to make it, we shortened it up right here. So we're actually make it a little bit longer so it matches back up. We just made this shorter to go over the toe. As soon as I get we get this row done, I will show you how it looks and it will oh it makes so much sense. So we're gonna chain one and turn and Suzette. So a single and a double and a skip. Single double skip single double skip single double. And a skip, single, double, and skip. And this time, instead of just doing a single crochet, we need to make this a little bit bigger. So we're going to do a single crochet and a Suzette. So there's a double crochet. And there's your last single crochet. So it was a single, a double, and a single in that last stitch. And that was round 33. Round 34 is just the Suzette stitch again. So chain one and turn around and work all the way to the other end. With a single and a double and a skip. See, this is really easy. And it works up pretty fast. It always works up pretty fast when you're working with booties though, because they're so small. Mm -hmm. Single and a double and a skip. And the last one is a single crochet. And that was row 34. Click. 35 and 36 are exactly the same. So chain one, and we'll work. I'll meet you at the end of row 36. Just Suzette back down, 35 and 36. So there's one. from row 36. Click row 36. Okay, now we're on row 37. We are really almost done. There's only 38 rows, so this is great. So this is going to be row 37. We did a chain one and turn, single crochet in the very first stitch. Chain three and skip three. One, two, three. So work into this one. Single crochet. Number one. 
number two, number three, four, and five single crochets. Chain three, skip three, and single crochet at the very end. And you're probably wondering why we did that. We just made, you just made buttonholes. Hooray! So that was row 37. Clicker. Now row 38. We are almost done, folks. This is so cool. Row 38. Single crochet in the very first chain. Or I'm sorry, the very first stitch. Three single crochets in our chain three space. So there's just one and two and three single crochets in each of those next five single crochets shows single crochets that we had done before so there's one two three four five three single crochets in this chain space And our very last stitch right here is just a single crochet. And that's our last round. Let's see, we have buttonholes right here. The buttonholes. Yay! Now you do have the option, this part is optional, if you want to make a finished edge, you can single crochet all the way around, if you like that look. If you want it to be single crocheted all the way around, you can go from here, all the way around, and back down. Or you can leave it the way it is, because this is that stitch is actually quite cute. I like it. I think it looks nice. The edges look nice. They're just a little... A little bumpy right here, a little bit of texture. So I'm going to leave this one the way it is. And we can finish off. Just do a little, just do a chain and a snip. Pop him through, make sure he's nice and tight. So again, there's the difference. So here's the difference between the two. See, there's one has a bit of a finished edge, just did a single crochet all the way around. Whereas the pink one is a little bit, has a little bit of texture, a little bit of lump. I like it this way, so I'm going to leave this one exactly the way it is. But that is an optional choice. Just go all the way around all the way to the other side. So put him aside. Only a little bit left to do here is just add buttons. So we can take out all these stitch markers now. We don't need any of them anymore. One. We'll remove all the stitch markers. If you don't have stitch markers you can use a paper clip or another, just a little scrap piece of yarn. I know a lot of people do that too. I have a bunch of them that I've actually made myself, but I didn't want them to make that much noise because they're metal and they would make a little bit more noise. But there we go, now it's time to add the buttons. Add our buttons and we have a wrap boot. So cute. So cute. We are almost done. Time to add the buttons. All right, we have three buttons. Two go out here, obviously, and these two. But then one is going to go right in here on the inside to hold this little flap in place so it doesn't go like this and get a little cold spot on Tootsies. So what we're going to do, it goes on about round 30. As you can see right here, it says where we 
where we were doing and then we reduced a little bit and then we made it bigger so like right in the middle of this reduction right in the center and right about here right about there or so on the inside of the boot do this on the inside of the boot and I usually just go like this and leave a little bit of it out so they can tie that all in a knot in a little bit so just sew this on however you wish to sew on a button everybody knows how to sew on a button make sure it's secure so you don't want buttons coming off when you have them on baby's feet so just make sure it's secure that's the most important part everybody knows how to sew on a button so I'll just do this quickly and then I wrap it around like this wrap it around the button and then I tie this in a knot under the button You don't have to do anything other than that. As long as you feel that it's very secure, we're done. Done with that one. Oops, I left that way too long. That was silly. There we go. Alright, so that goes, that one will go through this buttonhole to keep the boot closed at the front toe. Now we'll look over here and you decide where you want the buttons to be. We just have to go through these buttonholes. Now that this one is buttoned so you can see that you're not pulling too much, that it's not all puckered or anything. If you want the buttons to be right there, we're going to go like this. I'm going to put my thumb right here this is where I want that top button. And again, I leave this just out a little bit because I'll end up tying it in a knot. That back tail is just going to dangle. I didn't tie it in a knot or anything. I will do that in a little bit. <clears throat> With the other end when I'm done attaching this button both of its ends will be tied together in a knot. Sew it on, sew on your button however you wish as long as it's secure so little fingers don't get a hold of a button and rip it off of the booty because that's very dangerous. Everybody knows that, but just make sure it's secure. I'll call that secure. So then I'm going to tie that in a knot. And cut it off. That's all we need to do. check their button and now where do we want to put the other one probably right about there so I'll put my thumb underneath that spot this one goes all the way through grab my other button he's crazy unbutton this for just a moment so that I can reach in here a little bit faster. Right, 
that's sewn on. Oh, funny. All right, now that that is sewn on, take my needles out, tie it in a knot. Cut him off. All we have left to do is weave in these ends, and that only take a moment. So everything is woven in. I'm going to button this tiny button right here in the front, the one that doesn't show. Button him. Button this. And button this. And there you have it. He is so cute. I just love this pattern. I love, love, love this booty. This is the one that I think of as probably my favorite that I've designed. And it took forever for me to get it just right. All the the uh, reducing and all the changing and all that. I did this so many times. But this one, this actually, this pink too is one of my favorite ones. So here we go. There's one with the purple with my little butterflies. It's purple with butterflies. I love those butterflies. As you can see, I've done a lot of butterflies on for my buttons. This one kind of looks like a little clown too. I love it. This could be a great part of a costume if you want to be a little clown or a cute little ducky boot or a if you made it in red, it could be a little fireman. So cute. Just adorable. And this is just one for every day. It's just a very neutral, everyday kind of colors. So really, with this pattern, you can make anything. Absolutely anything. I think this might be one of my favorite ones that I've ever made. This guy right here. I love the colors. These buttons are awesome. The buttons really make make or break, I think, on some of these. But there you have it. The cutest little wrap boot ever. So thank you for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my channel. Please subscribe to my channel so I can keep making more booties and more other patterns. I would appreciate it. Um, and have a great day. I'm going to see you soon. Bye.